Hello, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning in to today's video. Doing uh, JMA Friday, as always, on a Friday, we're going to have a look at the weather for the coming month with Japanese and CFS B2 models. Uh, this is going to take us to the very start of September, so we're sort of coming out of statistical summer with this update. Um, of course, meteorologically questionable, because you can't get summer conditions going well on in September, even into October. But when it comes to um, getting the statistics together, you have a defined period, and summer finishes uh, statistically on the 31st of August. So we're just going to go into the start of the autumn with this update. Um, I'll get on that in a second. Before I get on with that, though, just to say about the ads, there's links to articles and all the pages. You can have a browse which is in click through links. You'll be having us to pay for the website. Thanks very much for doing that. This video adds to most pages and they own that content when you watch them. They close back up again. It does help to pay for gasworthies.com. So thanks. So it's getting involved. And thanks for doing that. I'm going to start off with 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into weekly periods uh, with the JMA. So um, the first week period will be taking us from the week that we're just starting, which is going from the 12th, uh, from the 5th through to the 12th of uh, August. As you know, these charts, blue is extrapolating to low pressure and yellow, red, orange, bright colours extrapolates to high pressure. So for the coming week, we've got a trough of low pressure generally sitting to the east and the northeast of us. A ridge is out to the west down to the southwest as well. And the jet stream is doing something a little bit like that. So, um, well, it is changeable, this. But I think the south and west would get the driest conditions. The north and east would get the most unsettled weather. Overall, I don't think it would be desperately wet, to be honest. Temperatures probably wouldn't be all that exciting. Maybe coming out a little bit on the cooler side of average. But with the Atlantic blocked off like that, lots of high pressure out to west of us. It wouldn't be a desperately wet scenario, uh, just not that um, exciting, really, with the temperatures. Now, week two, which takes us from the 12th through to the 19th of uh, August, looks like this. Uh, quite a bit of ridging again around, so fairly dry, I would have thought. Um, it's placing the ridge more towards the west-northwest, and it's bringing the jet stream, I think it's bringing the jet stream through uh, a little bit like that. It's rather a complicated one. Uh, but overall, again, a lot of settled weather coming through. I'm not sure it's overly warm again. The flow is probably still generally coming from a west-northwesterly type direction. There is below average heights down from the south, but I'm not sure uh, they're really impact us. They're generally going uh, down towards the bay. A bit. I think overall, a lot of settled weather coming up with that again. Temperature's is probably a little bit warmer than the first weekly period, but still nothing really to write home about if a model uh, has that uh, week right. And then we go through to the second half of August. This takes us from the 19th through, uh, from 19th of August through the 2nd of September. And quite a big change takes place then. The above average heights goes up towards Greenland. So that's high pressure up there. And we've got an area below average heights over the UK. That's a trough of low pressure uh, within the 500 millibar flow, and it means that the jet stream is doing something like that. That looks much more unsettled then, as you go through to the end of August, just to the start of September, that's turning significantly more unsettled. Uh, probably quite cool as well, but the main thing would be a fair amount of rain uh, coming along. So the first two weeks, up to the middle part of uh, August, or even into the second half of August, has a lot of dry and settled weather, and then there's a te deterioration there as you go through towards the end of the month. That looks a little bit autumnal, really, for the end of August. I think the rainfall will be going above average. So that's the uh, height anomalies from the northern hemisphere, or uh, from the North Pole down. Uh, this is sort of a tropical and mid-latitude uh, view. We'll see how the temperature and precipitation are stacking up with these uh, pressure anomalies. Uh, British Isles is just here in the far top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. So a quick reminder of what the height anomaly is for the coming uh, week. We've got a lot of ridging out to the west. Uh, and then we've got low pressure up here and here. Uh, and if you go there, low pressure is around there. So it means that the temperatures for the coming week generally coming out cooler than average. And that probably makes sense based on the setup. Uh, certainly not a particularly hot week. That might be a little bit pessimistic, actually, for what the temperatures will be doing 
in the coming week. But overall, it could have been on the cooler uh, side. The precipitation anomaly generally comes out dry than average. It's a bit wet and average from far north around Scotland, but generally most places coming out with um, below average precipitation. So it's okay for rainfall, but a bit on the cool side. Uh, week 2, which is the 12th through to 19th of August, looking a bit like this. That has been ridging generally out to the west of us. I think more or less bringing the jet stream to the north, just about. Uh, but it is a very complicated pattern. Uh, the temperatures are lifting up, so they're recovering through that middle part of August, generally going a bit warmer than average. Again, nothing particularly exciting with the temperatures, but a little bit on the warmer side. And precipitation, that is generally going below average as well. So that middle week of August, that looks quite good. 12th to 19th, I'm going to be on holiday then. And it does look okay. It's generally a bit warmer than average and dry than average as well. So that uh, good signs for that week. But then we go through to the end of August and just the start of September. This is from the 19th of uh, August through the 2nd of September. And we know we're getting that deterioration, replacing a trough within the 500 millibar flow right over the top of the country. So you can expect this to be much more unsettled. Temperatures are still holding up. Uh, I thought it could be a bit cooler, uh, actually, that uh, those um, final two weeks, but uh, actually temperatures for weeks three and weeks four are still holding up generally a little bit warmer than average, but the precipitation really is the main story here, goes significantly wetter than average into the end of August, of course this is covering the bank holiday, the uh, bank holiday weekend, um, and uh, well it's not great for precipitation generally going wetter than average, which, which you would expect with a trough of low pressure being placed right over the top of the country. So that's how the JMA is uh, seeing things. What about CFS V2? Uh, again, we'll start off 500 bit of our heights. These are broken down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 5th through to the 11th of August. This looks very similar to what the JMA is doing, actually. Trough of low pressure generally to the north and the northeast of us. It has some ridging down to the southwest, also ridging up to the northwest. So you'd assume, essentially, these uh, two areas of ridging are forming uh, an area of high pressure through the Atlantic, essentially. So it means that um, it's basically very similar to what the uh, JMA is doing with the flow, more or less doing something a bit like that. It's quite complicated again, but it's overall not all that warm because the flow is generally coming from uh, west northwesterly type direction. Week two, now this is a this was a better week with the JMA. Uh, it was signalling generally a warmer, drier week coming up here. Uh, not so good with the CFS. It's actually placing a trough of low pressure over the top of the country within the 500 millibar flow, ridging well away uh, from us over towards Eastern Europe and a bit around Greenland, going down into the Central Atlantic. And uh, that means that the jet stream is doing something like that. So it does place onto the cool side of the jet there, and it does look quite unsettled. So there's a difference there between the JMA and the CFS. The JMA suggesting this middle week of August should be warmer, drier. The uh, CFS, have a look at temperature precipitation in a moment, but I think it's suggesting cooler, wetter there uh, for that week. Week 3, which is going from the 19th to the 5th of August, is when the JMA is starting to place that trough over the top of the country. Um, this one doesn't look all that good either. The trough of low pressure is generally around eastern and northern Scotland. We've got ridging out to the west and also to the east of us. And I think the jet stream is probably doing something a bit like that. So again, it does look quite unsettled. Probably not as bad as week two, but it's still fairly unsettled. And overall, the temperatures, I don't think they'd be all that exciting either. And then week four, which is the 26th of August through to the 1st of September. Um, it's building in a ridge from the west. So, uh, again, that's different to what the JMA are doing. There is quite a discrepancy uh, again today. We had this last week. Quite a discrepancy again today between what the JMA and CFS V2 are both signalling uh, for this coming monthly period. So, a ridge out to the west. It's certainly settling down and drying up. The jet stream's probably going northwards. Um, the problem, of course, with high pressure centred to the west of us is that the air is generally coming down uh, across the country, something like that. So although it's settling down, it's probably not warming up 
all that much. You will, to get it uh, really warm, you want to send the high pressure to the east of us and then draw up the air from the south. So I don't think it's all that warm, but it is settling down there as we go through to the end of August into the start of September, which is at odds with what the uh, JMA is doing. Let's have a look at the temperatures for the coming months over the next weekly period from the 5th to the 11th of August. In agreement with the JMA for this week, both models are coming out cooler than average in most green colours. So a cooler than average week being signalled there. Uh, not so for week two, though. This is to up to the 18th of August. And this is when uh, the JMA was going for a warmer week. CFS V2 is still significantly cooler than average. In fact, week two could be even cooler than uh, week one. So quite a dismal period for temperatures there, if that's right. Week three also comes out cooler than average from the 19th, 25th of August. And then we go through to the very end of the month, which is 26th of August, uh, 1st of September, week four. And still a bit on the cooler side, but temperatures starting to recover as that ridge begins to build in uh, from the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, precipitation uh, for the coming week generally a bit drier than average, a bit wetter in the north. So again, that's in agreement with the JMA. They're both in agreement for the coming week. That is going to be quite cool with the temperatures. Overall, fairly dry, a bit wetter up to the far north of the country. Uh, week two, which you expect to be quite an unsettled week, that is coming out generally average with the precipitation. So it's wetter than week one, but it isn't going for a wetter than average week. However, based on the setup, I would have thought precipitation is likely to be coming out a bit above average through that week. Uh, week three, the 19th, 25th of August, that's close to average again. Maybe, you probably can't work it out all that well or make it out all that well, but it is a bit wetter than average for England and Wales, closer to normal elsewhere. And then week four, as the reef starts to build in from the Atlantic, very end of the month. So uh, precipitation then is going ever so slightly drier than average to the uh, west particularly. So it's a mixed bag today. They're both, um, both models are sort of agreeing for the coming week, which is a bit cooler than average and generally quite dry. After that, they're diverging. It's quite unusual to see this. Um, we had it last week. We had it again uh, this week. It's probably down just to the uncertainty of the time of year, August, September, Always very, very difficult for the models to uh, cope with because it's a period where we're starting to see the tropical Atlantic uh, beginning to uh, rev itself up in terms of um, storms and hurricanes. And where those storms and hurricanes go through the Atlantic, where they're steered, is always, it always creates a lot of uncertainty for um, both short-range models and long-range models to cope with. So that's probably what explains this this uh, discrepancy between the two models. Overall, they're going for fairly mixed conditions to continue through August, really. They're differing around the week-by-week -week periods, but overall, fairly changeable and not particularly exciting with the temperatures either. I think that's the broad message between the two models, although, as I say, they are differing by a week uh, on a week-by-week -week basis other than for the coming week. However, the shorter range models are looking quite good, I have to say. So I'm just going to leave you with the GFS and ECM. I uh, don't normally do this with JMA, but I'll just show you how already these longer range models could be getting it wrong. So this is the GFS for Tuesday, bringing down this cool normally wind. We're going to get a swiper there from the north. The core of that looks like it's going into Scandinavia now, though, so it's not going to be desperately cold, but it will be turning cooler uh, through the middle part of the week. Then the Azores high starts to build back in from the west-southwest through the second half of next week, bringing quite a bit of dry and warm weather to England and Wales. It's a little bit more unsettled for Scotland. And then we go through into uh, next weekend. This is Saturday the 13th, on into Sunday the 14th, Monday the 15th. And generally, the idea is for high pressure to be increasingly influential. So um, with that one, we're sending the jet stream well away from us up to the north, around Greenland and Iceland. We've got this ridge building through the country. That does look pretty good there as we're going up towards the middle part of August. It's probably more in line with what the JMA is showing compared to the CFS V2. Uh, that looks okay. Monday 15th of August. That'll be the first day of my holiday. And it looks pretty good there uh, for that uh, day. It's 10 days away. 
Um, so it's not to be relied upon, but that's something where the GFS is going. E7 is very similar, so bring down this cool northerly wind on Tuesday next week. Um, and it lasts a bit longer with the ECM as well. So even by Thursday, we're still generally in quite a cool northerly flow, although the Azores High is trying to make its move then. As we go through to the end of next week, this is Friday the 12th, a week away, the Azores High finally begins to build in across the country, turning it drier and warmer. And then the Azores High just dominates through that weekend of 13th, 14th of September. And by day 10, which is Monday the 15th, look at that high pressure sitting right over top of the country. Again, the jet stream's being pushed well, well away from us up towards Greenland and Iceland. It's going up there. And uh, this high pressure looks quite good, actually. It would be um, certainly bringing significantly warmer weather. It's not necessarily all that hot, because, again, uh, you would want to send to the high pressure across central Europe to bring up real heat from the south. But it certainly is pretty warm. You'd be getting temperatures into the mid-20s Celsius with that, most definitely, and uh, plenty of dry and sunny weather as well. It's probably more in line with what the JMA is doing, although even the JMA, I don't think it's going that far for that middle week of, uh, of the month. But um, just to show you the uncertainty we've got at the moment, generally the JMA and CFS are quite pessimistic for our prospects uh, for the remainder of August, whereas these shorter range ones, they're probably ones to keep an eye on, uh, these are much more bullish about eventually building in quite a big ridge uh, at the end of next week, which could take us through the middle part of August with a significantly warmer and drier spell of weather. It's all highly ex um, high experimental, it's all highly speculative, so we just have to monitor it and uh, see how we go. So that's JMA uh, Friday for this week. We'll do it again next week. Um, and uh, tomorrow, it's a week ahead forecast. We'll also have the CANSIPS update for the next six months. It can be CANSIPS Saturday. Uh, so come back for that tomorrow. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.